Hi guys, this is the uh, second video of the results from my first tests. Um, if you haven't seen the first part, which will be part um, five, um, I, I would look at part five because otherwise this, this won't make any sense. Um, anyway, here's the second part of those results. I redid these tests yesterday, so this is uh, uh, tests on the 21st of January uh, 2013 but um, anyway because I, I just wanted to confirm that I was getting things right and um, uh, what I've done is I, I've, these are the voltages that I've changed so I've applied uh, 5, 10, 15 etc through to 30 volts so I've applied that voltage to the cell and then I've uh, measured the current calculated the watts and I've um, uh, measured the time uh, that it took to fill that 10 millimeter syringe. Um, I've calculated the watt seconds. And this is an interesting one, the apparent resistance. And I'll, I'll come back onto that later. Um, but um, let me, oh, I also calculated um, uh, 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 seconds per volt, um, milliliters uh, per volt second, um, milliliters per amp second, and uh, milliliters per watt. And uh, I've got some of those in graphical form. Um, what I'll do is I'll I'll um, I'll put this on the screen so as you're not having to look at my uh, my scribble. Um, so I'll type that up in a bit. On this graph, I've uh, got the uh, watts per second uh, down the uh, the left hand side here. So power. So remember, this is the amount of power, and that's uh, measured against voltage uh, at the steps five, ten, fifteen, etc. And that is to produce. 10 milliliters of HHO. So this is uh, the watt seconds, uh, in other words, the power into the cell, the uh, amps and volts times the number of seconds it took to produce uh, 10 milliliters. You can see at uh, 5 volts, uh, Okay, I've penciled in the numbers to uh, make it easier for me. So, at working at five volts on the cell, um, when I uh, take the uh, the watts, so the amps times the volts, uh, times the number of seconds that it took to fill the 10 millimeter, uh, milliliter syringe, it actually took uh, 448 uh, watt seconds. Um, and fine, uh, a slow production rate, but that was the number of watts required to produce 10 milliliters. When I went to 10 volts, it took 722 watt seconds to produce exactly the same amount of gas. So remember, this is the amount of energy that I'm putting into uh, the water or into the cell in order to produce 10 milliliters. So yes, it happens quicker, but it does so at a cost, quite a significant cost in uh, efficiency. When I went to 15 volts, it took 911.4 uh, watt seconds, uh, again, to produce the same amount as I could produce um, uh, with 5 volts with um, in half the actual input power. So uh, when I got to 20 volts, it uh, again to produce the same volume of gas as I've got there, it took 1152.4 watt seconds. So what this is saying is this is like driving your car faster. You get there quicker you produce, in this case, you produce more gas. In the case of your car, 
uh, you get there quicker but you <laughs> you use more juice you use more petrol um, so it, it's it's showing very clearly uh, as I go to 25 volts um, it took 1400 watt seconds to produce 10 milliliters and then when I got up to here when I got to uh, 30 volts it actually took 1728 watts seconds yeah watts time seconds to produce exactly the same amount of uh, gas there as I produce there so obviously if you were going to make uh, HHO from a solar panel you really want to do it at the lowest possible voltage that you can it'll take longer to gather the gas but you'll gather it more efficiently okay guys uh, if you're still with me thank you for your forbearance that shows true dedication and uh, okay this is where I've uh, edited uh, part of this video and um, uh, here I'm showing watts per second per milliliter so this is the number of watts times the number of seconds to produce uh, one milliliter and I've carried out that trial at 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 and 30 volts um, and then uh, uh, down the left hand side here we've got uh, watts times seconds per milliliter and we're, uh, we're running uh, from uh, 0 up to uh, around uh, 180 okay so at 5 volts it uh, took 44.8 uh, watt seconds to produce one milliliter at 10 volts uh, that increased 72.2 uh, watt seconds per milliliter so what that's telling us straight away is that it takes um, more energy to produce the same amount of gas when we're working at a lower voltage so for clarity at 5 volts it took 44.8 watt seconds but uh, I went to a higher voltage and it actually took more uh, watt seconds so more power and that's uh, uh, amps times volts times seconds to, to give me uh, watt seconds it took more power to produce the same amount of gas the same volume as gas uh, in both cases as we go to 15 volts sorry get that on camera as we go to 15 volts um, so it took 91.14 watt seconds um, 20 volts it took uh, 115.24 at uh, 25 volts it took 140 uh, watt seconds and at uh, 30 volts here you'll see that goes up there and that is uh, 172.8 watt seconds per milliliter so um, although not as startling as I um, uh, sort of thought initially um, the uh, difference between working at 5 volts and working at 30 volts it's uh, a factor of 3.85 so it, it took uh, for the same volume as gas there and there when I was working at 30 volts it took nearly four times the amount of power to produce the same amount of gas okay it did it quicker here so that uh, speed of production come at the cost of extra energy remember it's the same volume of gas so if you like you fill in the same bucket load of gas there as you are there but if you're working at a lower voltage you do it more efficiently um, I will uh, say more on this uh, on another occasion um, this this may all be obvious to uh, an electrochemist but 
uh, for me it was a real revelation um, to see that the efficiency actually uh, reduces at the higher voltage. So going back to my notebook, um, at 5 volts we pulled um, uh, 0.14 amps so uh, from uh, Ohm's law I still use E rather than V that's what I was taught um, so from Ohm's law uh, we divide the voltage by the current and that gives us an apparent resistance of 35.71 ohms and I'm going to say apparent resistance because when we go to 10 volts and uh, we are now pulling uh, 0.38 amps and we divide the uh, uh, the 10 volts by uh, by the current uh, we get 26.31 ohms so in other words working at a higher voltage the apparent r resistance of the cell has changed um, and uh, that's a property of water that I, I didn't know about. I, I simply did, I know nothing about chemistry, uh, but I simply didn't know that. Uh, at 15 volts, the cell looks like 24.19 ohms. At 20 volts, it looks like 23.25. At 25 volts, it looks like 22.32. And at 30 volts, it looks like 20.8. 3 ohms. Now I honestly expected the cell to have a constant resistance. Uh, I understand that people do suffer with um, uh, excessive heat in the cell and obviously the more volts you're putting in there you're just producing greater I squared R losses, you're just uh, producing uh, greater resistive losses. Anyway um, that's the data that I've gathered so far. I've got other information as well uh, that I'm wading through. But um, uh, watch this space. Here's a tip for you before I go. Um, how often have you done this? You've had your meter plugged from volts onto amps, you've made a, a test, you've measured the current, then you've uh, sort of cleared everything away you pick up the meter again and then you go to measure some volts and bang. Um, I, I do it fairly frequently um, and uh, what I do here is, you see I've put this little note here, it's just a, a little bit of cardboard, bit of sellotape on it and it says amps and that's just a little reminder to uh, remind me that I've got the uh, I've got this plug in the amp meters range. Um, as I say, I've, I've done it so many times, I've uh, um, I, I haven't managed to wipe a meter out uh, <laughs> for many years. But uh, anyway, it's a little tip for you for what it's worth. And uh, it might just save uh, some piece of equipment or a lot of embarrassment. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Bye bye.